Happy Friday. It is Friday the 11th, 2-11. Today, 2022. So 2-11-2-2. Two, two, two. Pretty soon we're going to have 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. That'll be interesting. Uh, a lot of twos. I don't know what those are. Depends if your life path is a two, it might mean something. I don't know. I guess if you added all those together, what would it be? It'd be uh, two, two, there's so many twos. One, two, three, four, five, ten. And so you add those together, one plus zero is one. So maybe it's a one life path. I don't know. But no, it's February 11th. And we have the Super Bowl coming up this weekend. Oh, the big grandiose Super Bowl. Well, there's a lot of traffic that goes on. If you uh, want to do a little research on that. Maybe the trucks will surround it and, and help police it a little bit. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that's the narrative now. The truckers may come to the Super Bowl and then on to D.C. for the State of the Union. I, I don't know. I mean, when the mainstream news is covering it, it's almost like um, eh, they're telegraphing too much. And it makes me think, okay, what's engineered about this? What's planned about this? Is this a an op at some point? No, no. Uh, watch out for a false flag. Might be something in the, in the making because when things go to garbage and when the economy's no good, when you have 7.5% inflation um, and there's no way out of it, you might have some uh, event, you know, to, as cover. So they print more money and lock down more and, you know, let's, let's go back to 911. So anyway, don't want to harp on that too much. But um, Super Bowl, uh, I think it's going to be broadcast during the Super Bowl. Lester Holt from from NBC is interviewing or has interviewed already Joe Biden, President Joe Biden. And I saw a snippet of the interview. I think it's going to be on in the Super Bowl. I, you know, whatever. It might be tonight, tomorrow night. Who knows? But Joe Biden interviewed by Lester Holt. And Lester asked him about uh, inflation, 7.5% inflation. And what we can expect, you know, when we can re expect some relief, what's the cause of this? And Biden blamed it on, well, it's a supply chain. You know, we've got uh, trucks, you know, he used the example of we had all these trucks and they had a chip shortage and all the trucks sat there. And he really didn't get into it too much because he might have in the entire interview, but in that one, you can see where he was going with it. It's the supply chain. It's the fault of the supply chain that all the costs of things are going up because we can't get enough of them and la 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 yeah yeah that's part of it but the problem is you locked everything down and you made this sound like this was some kind of end of the world scenario and nobody can go to work and if you you can't go to work if you don't have a prick and all these bull crap regulations and mandates really just mandates that never really existed because they're not lawful actions and you're seeing courts now rolling it all back at the governor level and the state level because they never should have had these mandates. It's unconstitutional. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, screw the economy. Um, you know, but that's the reason why we have inflation. Because of all the lockdowns. Well, let, let's not talk about the fact that you printed trillions of dollars and created trillions of dollars out of nothing in the past couple of years. Both presidents doesn't matter who's president. See, this is the thing. Um, I liked a lot of things that Trump did. I did. And, you know, he didn't try to get us in foreign entanglements, try to protect the border. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that he did, but there's a lot of things that, you know, a lot of people don't like. doesn't matter when it comes to economics, though. See, when you're living in a Ponzi scheme, the Ponzi scheme needs more money to continue. It doesn't matter who the president is. And so you've got the ability to maybe divert those funds to the projects you like, but you still have to create the money. And that's really what it comes down to. And if you look at a long-term chart of the US dollar, um, the debt and the monetary supply, it just keeps going up. It has to go up because it's a debt-based system. It's a Ponzi scheme. That's what it comes down to. So it doesn't matter who the president is. Until you change the monetary system, it's not gonna matter. So get into crypto, get into sound assets, gold, silver, Bitcoin, Litecoin, even Digibyte, even Theta. You know, okay, I'm going to get into this. I've got a lot of people who make comments and say, why don't you talk about Theta? Why don't you talk about Bitcoin Cash? 
why don't you talk about this coin, that coin, you know, okay. Well, it's because I talk about the things that I believe in. I'm not saying I don't believe in those at all. In fact, I've got a little bit of both of them. But I'm looking at the sound money. I'm looking at principles of sound money in the digital world. What makes it sound money? Well, the finite supply is a good thing. You know, there's a, there's a fixed supply of theta. There's a billion of them. Um, in Bitcoin Cash, there's a fixed supply of those. And it's a proof of work coin. I look at that because, you know, it takes effort. It takes energy. It's not something you can create out of nothing. I mean, a billion theta were created out of nothing. Poof. And there it was. So, you know, I look at it from that standpoint and I'm like, okay, hey, if the technology is good, which it looks to be good, and it looks to, if they do what they say they're going to do, that's great. It's just like any other tech company. It's like Apple, Microsoft, you know, Netflix, YouTube, you know, so that's fine. But is it sound money? Eh, no, not really. Um, so that's what I look at as far as cryptocurrencies. I want something with a fixed supply, something that's not going to be, you know, diluted. And it took work to produce it. So therefore, there's that stored energy in it. It's not something that can be easily replicated because anybody can come out and make a billion tokens. Anybody can come out and make, you know, trillions of tokens. You see all the time with these dog meme coins and they create a trillion, hundred trillion of these tokens and just, and there it is. And then people go out and buy it and then they get rich, you know, the people that created it. Um, wasn't a lot of work involved in that other than just a few lines of code. You know, the Ethereum blockchain allows that to happen. So you've got a lot of coins on the Ethereum blockchain that it's just nothing more than a simple smart contract that says, hey, this number of tokens exist. That's it. Done. And boom, it's released. And then you have to have faith that the people behind it who are going to get rich off of it because you're paying for these tokens and they get the money, you have to have to have faith that they're actually going to deliver on technology. And that's a leap. I mean, when something comes out last year and you think, oh, well, yeah, I love it. That's a great idea. You know, when they do this and do this and do this, that's fine. If they do that, you know, then it could be a very good project. It could be a very good technology that comes to the market. However, they have to do it. And, you know, if you're working every day and you are getting paid in some sort of money that's depreciating like the U.S. dollar, you want to put it in something that you can hold and you know you can always trade. It's very liquid. Everybody accepts it. I mean, that's why I look at Litecoin. It's everywhere very liquid. Only 84 million of them. So there's a fixed supply. There's only like 69 million right now. You know, you still got 15 million to mine out over the next hundred years. And Bitcoin, there's only 2 million left to be mined out. So it's a scarce asset. And, you know, people will say, well, Bitcoin cash, you know, that's, that's the same kind of thing. That's right up your alley and your wheelhouse, right? I mean, it is and it isn't. Um, you got to go with the coins that you resonate with. I really don't resonate with it. I don't resonate with that community. Um, I'm not saying there's bad people in it. It's just, I don't, I don't like the way they kind of carried it out in the whole fork. Uh, when it went away from Bitcoin, it, it just, it did more damage than anything. Um, and Litecoin doesn't do that. Litecoin's always supported Bitcoin and kind of gone hand in hand with it. So, I, you know, and I like the community a lot better in Litecoin. I mean, everybody I've met in Litecoin, everybody I've met in crypto is, you know, primarily because of Litecoin. Because of meetings, you know, and meetups and, and conferences where a lot of people who support Litecoin have come together. And I've met a lot of good people. So I have faith in that community. Um, that's just what I know. And that's just been my experience. And so that's that's why I'm, I'm very, very pro-Litecoin. Um, there's a lot of good things going for it. It's got a great community. It's It's got good leadership. It's got, you know, a a foundation that supports it. I mean, you know, it's proof of work. It's been running for over 10 years, nonstop, you know, uninterrupted. You know, every transaction goes through the finite supply, the technology that's being built on it, confidential transactions, you know, with MWeb, Mimblewimble, no other coin. Well, I shouldn't say no other coin, but no other coin like Litecoin, a liquid coin, a big money coin has that, that capability. Um, it's a big deal. You know, Bitcoin won't even have that. So you know, arguably, Litecoin will be better money than Bitcoin. I, I think, you know, it's not even argue, an argument. It's better money than Bitcoin. It just is. Now, silver is better money than gold. But 
you know, if you're locking up a lot of wealth, you put it in gold. So I, I just, um, you know, there's certain coins I just don't resonate with and I don't have to talk about them because it's just, I, I don't feel like I want to, if, if somebody new is coming into the space, I don't want to be talking about certain coins to them. The biggest thing is to understand what sound money is. And you get that with Bitcoin and Litecoin. So that's what I talk about primarily. And I focus on Litecoin because it's, I think it's better money than Bitcoin because it's more liquid and it's easier to use. It's faster. So it is what it is. So, yeah, I mean, I get it. You know, there's a lot of great coins out there. I've got a lot of them. You know, I've looked at, I remember the ICO, you know, craze let's call it in 2017 and what happened was there were a lot of good i shouldn't say that there are a lot of projects with good ideas but they haven't proven themselves and you know i invested in a lot of them and i lost a lot of money it went to zero a lot of them and, you know they just, it was a, it was a risk it was a gamble and a lot of it went to zero um but litecoin's still around um but you see that constantly, um, newer coins come out. They need to prove themselves to me. You know, Theta has been out since what, 2018, maybe 17. You know, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you know, that's not that long in the crypto space. I mean, okay, let's say it's four years. Okay. You're getting there, but you go back with Digibyte. That's, that's 2014. You know, you've got eight, what, eight years, six, seven, eight years. Yeah. Litecoin 2011, October 13th, you know, over 10 years, you will be 10 and a half years soon. Bitcoin, January 3rd, 2009, you know, you're at what, 13 years now? So they've proven the test of time. And that's important when you're going to lock up your money, when you're going to put your energy into something. I want to make sure that's going to be around. Oh, will it have the big gains necessarily? No, nah, probably not. Not some of these other ones, but there's a lot lower risk. Absolutely a lot lower risk. You still have a centralized development team on a lot of these coins. And, you know, if something goes wrong there, it is what it is. You lose all your money. You know, there's a flaw in the code. Okay, here, here's the thing. I was a Bravo coin. Let me give you an example. Bravo coin. And in 2019, I found out about Bravo coin. I thought, man, this is a great concept. And essentially what it what did, it's like Yelp. If you know what Yelp is, you leave reviews for restaurants and different things, you know, movie theaters, um, hotels. And Bravo Coin had that concept where you could actually go out and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm staying at this hotel and you rate it. Or I, I went to see this movie or I watched this movie on Netflix or I went to this restaurant. And you could leave your feedback and give it so many, you know, thumbs up or stars. And it was a community driven project to where the community would give feedback and you know help each other as far as hey is this place any good or not and you'd get paid in bravo coin you would, would receive bravo coin based on the number of people who said liked your reviews you know and and you would earn that coin and it was on uh, one or two exchanges and i mean you could take that off and you could you could transfer into bitcoin into litecoin if you wanted to so it was a great concept um, and then all of a sudden, you know, there was a glitch in a code or something and the development team didn't fix it. And so now it's dead, dead project. So if you got coins sitting on there, which I did, you lost them all. You can't access them. So it was a great idea and I wanted to support it and I did support it, but you know, it, the developer said, Hey, I'm not going to continue to develop for this. Then it's, it's over. You know, it's all gone. So somebody could come in there and, you know, maybe, get this, get the code, you know, and all that, you know, and take over the project, that'd be a great thing and, and resurrect it. And that's happened before, you know, with projects that came out in 2017. Um, but if it doesn't have the energy, if it doesn't have the support, the development, the community, then that coin's worthless. Um, if that, if the development team just says, ah, oh, you know what, we're just not going to make any updates, then it, it's done. It's centralized. It's over. So, you know, because it was more of a centralized coin, they tried to decentralize it a little bit with like nodes, master node type things, um, but it just didn't didn't go. You know, they stopped updating the code, and that was it. So it's important to if you're going to put your energy, that your hard work that you do, and you're going to put it into something, you want to make sure it's going to be around. That's why I preach on Litecoin. 
And again, you could say Bitcoin Cash, but I don't know, just my experience with Bitcoin Cash, it's not as fast as Litecoin. It just seems like it's had some issues to me. And I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm not against it. It's just I don't, you know, I don't use it. I use Litecoin all the time. I mean, it just works. And so that's the proof in the pudding to me. I Anytime I send it to anybody, it's like, boom, there it is. There's no question. You know, the network is just solid. So that's that's why I talk about that. All right, and I'm done talking about it. Litecoin is sound money for the digital age. Don't forget that. Today is Friday. We have our happy hour at 4 p.m. Central Time on Litecoin Lisa's channel. She's going to simulcast it on this channel. And check that out. It's always fun. I love interacting with the community. It's. I'd like to do that now. I'd like to do live streams, but I have to have, I think, a 1,000... Uh, subscribers to my channel and I don't I'm not close to that so I mean if you're not if you're watching this hey give me a subscribe <laughs> you know subscribe to my channel so I can get to a certain point and I can actually go live without some third-party software I, you know I just I like to just pull out the phone and just start talking if you haven't noticed and I it just it'd be nice to go live and I could be see your comments right now if you're watching it it's I like that interaction I like doing things live and um, today we do our live happy hour at four o'clock central time, five o'clock Eastern time. So I hope you can check that out. Uh, go just look up Litecoin Lisa on YouTube and you'll find her. And you can watch some of the past episodes. You can always go to clintwestwood.net and um, I link up all the videos that we've done. And then you can get there that way. You know, the videos and interviews that I've done. And uh, so it's always a good time. It's, it's something that brings the community together. And that's what's so important to me is to bring the community together because together that's how we move forward you know we're not just some isolated person out in the wilderness no i mean we we and litecoin more than anything has helped me find other people with, who are like-minded so community is very important very important in the real world it's very important um you need each other to to help out you know, it's how we it's how we fix these things rather than depending upon a central authority, which has failed us with seven and a half percent inflation, <sighs> lack of leadership. I mean, not looking. It's you know, even if they want to look out for the people, it's too big and bloated to be efficient enough to look out for the people. So it comes down to the local level. It comes down to community, people you know, people you see every day. So find ways to bring each other together and support each other rather than depending upon, you know, that big corporation, you know, multiple corporations, that fascist state that we find ourselves in. Um, I'm going to rant too much more on that, but yeah, check out happy hour. I've got my buddy, Polly P driving in today. Mitch is here. Um, we're just going to have a few people over for the Super Bowl. I think Silvertooth might be showing up and um, trying to get J-Mac here. Don't know if he's going to be able to make it. I hope he does, though, because I always enjoy seeing him. He's a good dude. So that's what it's about, getting people together and, and uh, you know, just, just sharing those moments. All right. I thank you for sharing your moments and your time with me. As always, it's very important. Trust yourself and trust your instincts because the mainstream news, all of that matrix broadcasting garbage is not looking out for you. You got to trust yourself and you take a step back and and realize, hey, you know what? This sounds like it might be a way out. This might be a better way. You know, trust yourself. Listen to that inner voice. I mean, it's it's connected to something bigger than you. And it's important that uh, you listen. All right. Hope you have a great Friday. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up for me. That helps. It really does. It gets it out there to more people. And uh, if you see any value in this, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe the notification bell too. So you can get notified every time, you know, this, this crazy person comes on and starts talking. All right. Thanks a lot. Love you all. Trust yourselves. Have a wonderful weekend.